All praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Chakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly. Shalom to the Akwath, which is the women believers. Shalom to you. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So, as I was reading today, I was thinking about um, this parable right here. Very quick one. But you actually have people who take this literally. And I want to talk about what is this parable actually talking about? So it says, woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offense, offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offensive cometh. So in this ministry of ours, you're going to have an opposition. You're going to have men that offend you, but woe unto that man that offend you. Wherefore, if your hand or your foot offend you, cut them off. So wait a minute. The scripture above is talking about a man. Now the scripture going into body parts. But let's continue to read. And cast them from you. And it's better for you to enter into life halt or maim rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. So what this is really going into is the brotherhood because we are symbolized as the body of Yahweh Shai. And also within a body, you have a head, you have arms, you have feet, you have hands, all right, you have body parts. So basically the Lord, what this parable is talking about, if you are in a camp, and you have brothers who have different doctrines or different beliefs or, you know, y'all just not meshing. It's better for you to separate from that man than for you to be with that man and y'all both be cast into the fire. Because what the scripture says, a leaven, a little leaven, leaven the whole lump in Galatians 5 and 7. So this is what it's talking about. I think it was a man back in the day who took this little, um, I forgot the man's name. It was a man back in the day that took this scripture huh, literal and he ended up cutting off one of his limbs and he died stupid. But guess what? I bet you Christianity still believe that this is the case and you will never hear Christianity go into a parable anyway, you know? But it says, and if your eye offend you, pluck it out, cast it from you is it is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into the hellfire. So also when you read Matthew um, 18, when you get down to the 20th verse, it talks about those uh, two people who speak in my name. There I am in the midst. So this whole parable is talking about. The kingdom of heaven, the brotherhood, how many times you should forgive your brother and all of that. That's what this that's what this chapter is talking about. And when it goes to, as I say, at the end of verse eight, everlasting fire and at the end of verse nine, hell fire is the same thing. It's going to be a fire. On the earth that people are going to be in because they're wicked. No such thing is hell underground. When the scripture says that when you die, your flesh go into the ground, but your spirit go back to the Lord. That's in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. So the Bible don't contradict itself. But now let's get into, you know, the scriptures that back up that this parable is talking about your fellow brother. If y'all do not agree, as I say in Amos 3 and 3, how can two walk together unless you're being agreed? It's better for you to separate from that person. Even matter of fact, say if you do agree, but y'all, y'all spirits just don't mesh. It's better for you to separate because what's going to happen, a fire inside of you is going to end up coming out as an outburst upon that man. And then now y'all trying to be at each other's throats and stuff like that. The Lord do not play about, you know, the scripture said, lay no hands on no men. And also that's twofold because that's literally talking about don't be putting your hands on people, especially a brother. And also, you know, anointing a brother to be, you know, in a camp or, 
you know, making him uh, or basically annoying him to be a teacher. So, but let's get this. So it says, so we being many are one body in Hamashiach and every one members one of another. So that parable is talking about the body. You're supposed to be like minded with your fellow brother. And then and to back it up. I think it's another one in first Corinthians. For as the body is one and have many members, all the Members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Hamashiach. So when you are a body, you're supposed to speak the same thing, believe the same thing. And matter of fact, I think that's at first Corinthians one and 10. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you. Another word for division is schism. But that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. <clears throat> so it end up happening with like fallouts. Something happened where they get reproved, rebuked, but they don't take the rebuke. They get offended or they can actually be cast out because they did something. But instead of, you know, OK, I've been cast out. I fucked up. I need to examine myself now. I need to repent and still do the work. They end up doing the work. But now they hold doctrine to center around, you know, talking about the, the men who kicked them out of the camp. They're not prophesying no more, you know. So that is an example of, you know, cutting off a hand, cutting off a foot, cutting off an eye, you know, out of that body for it be no schisms. Matter of fact, what is that one? Because most of the time it be it's most of the time it's two reasons. Is either that a man end up trying to sneak in a, a different doctrine or a man did something that goes against the doctrine, which, you know, could have offended a brother, could have been lying, could have been stealing money, could have been, you know, doing things that's contrary to the commandments. But just to show you that also leaven could be symbolized as um, doctrine. So when Yahweh, when Yahweh Bashim was shy. You know, Yahweh Shah was going through this parable. That's why the Lord started off this sentence like this. So it said, how is it that ye did not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread, that you should be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not be aware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So, you know, a little leaven, you know, it, it could be. Matter of fact, a little leaven is majority of the time doctrine. That scripture talks about a little leaven, leaven, the whole lump. You got to separate from a man who don't believe like you. That's why all these unity camps is going to come to no um, avail because the Lord says, except a man build of a house in the name of the Lord, that house that he built of is in vain because you have people that don't believe in a chip, do believe in a chip. You know, it, 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 it's just confusion, you know, but I just thought that, you know, this video would be edifying because you have new believers every day. You might come across the scripture, say, if you are a person who watched pornography, that's something that is hard to get over. Right. And your right hand is what you use to satisfy yourself. You read this parable and then your ass uh, contemplate, you know, cutting off your right hand. And that's not even what the scripture mean. So this is why, you know, people who watch the videos, you might be looking at it like, well, why he even talking about this? Why he even teaching this? Because there's somebody out there that might need it. And every in every video that's put out there is through the spirit of Yahweh Bashan Al Shah. Because the Lord have sheep. And it might just be one sheep that the Lord is trying to give an ear to. So that's why these type of videos be made. Um, so to end it on this, it said that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. So that's what the parable is talking about when it talks about cutting off your body parts and, you know, basically separating from a man 
who have a different doctrine, who's doing wickedness, and that y'all both don't go into the, um, the eternal fire because a little leaven leavened a whole lump. That little leaven can corrupt you because what what most people do, you end up taking a liking unto a brother and then you start to, you know, overlook what a brother do because you like him. And, it, and, it, and the truth is um, way more deeper than that. The Lord ain't dealing with um, friendships. The Lord is dealing with disciples. The Lord is dealing with the elect, you know. So you might have a brother that you cool with. You might have a good y'all y'all personality, you know, mesh with each other. And then you might be looking at another brother who you don't mesh with like that. But the Lord love him. The Lord dealing with him. The one that you love and like the Lord ain't even dealing with him. So don't have favoritism. That's why the Lord said in, in Deuteronomy 1 and 17 that uh, for there is no respecter of persons in judgment. So it don't matter what status you are, who you are. If you do wrong, you're going to receive the wrong that you have done. So all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, and Shalom.